Hey everyone, Psychoriasin here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how to design appealing bodies. So, first of all, I have to go over a very simplified body, and I'll kind of walk you through uh, the ways I used to design and uh, the way I design now and why I prefer it. So, um, I recommend you watch the last video I made if you haven't. It's called How to Design how to design appealing faces because um, that that should help. So the first thing is I used to actually I shouldn't even put a head in here. Um, I used to design the body kind of like well I didn't design it this way but I thought about it this way. Okay you start with a top and a bottom then you split that in half and this is pretty much where the crotch goes. You split this in half and then this in half, these are the knees. Um, and then you split this in half, and I mean, half there. Uh, each one gets split in half until you have eight sections. Uh, so eight heads tall, you get the head occupying this one. Uh, then the nipples are here. So you'd have like a neck, body here. Um, and then the crotch is here, as we said, belly button is here. Oh, wow. This is already getting really off center. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so the, the belly buttons here, meaning the elbows are here because the elbows are at the same, um, level as the, the belly button. And then the crotch is here. So you can put like a underwear thing and get kind of where the pelvis is. So here's kind of the rib cage. Here's the pelvis kind of. Um, and then, as I said, knees. Uh, so you get a bone coming out like this and it goes down. It's called the greater trochanter. You've probably seen it if you've uh, studied anatomy at all. So it comes out like this. It's got this bump here. And then it goes down. This is the femur. This, this bone, this leg bone, got the knees, and then you get the, the feet down here. All right. So that's like a basic ed eight head body. Um, and it's okay to start with, uh, but it's a bit, it's a bit hard to use, especially when you turn the figure or play with the figure in a way like, well, if the person's hunched over, then what happens, right? Like, how do you get the eight heads? I mean, you still kind of can do it if you reverse engineer and you say, well, okay, so this leg, uh, here's a butt, here's a leg going down. So this, if you follow the knee and you take an arc, you can say this is where the knee would be. Because if basically you can move things in a side view, if you just follow an arc, it's pretty much just, you know, like how things work. If you think about a clock, right? You got the hand and it's here. Well, where, where is it going to be if, if it's at 12 here and it's going to be three here? Well, you follow this arc and then you can get its placement. And that's the same with the leg or anything else. If, as long as it's not moving like towards us, like if this leg was moving towards us, you'd still follow an arc, but it would be a different arc. Anyway, follow that down, get like that, follow, uh, or you could just take this measurement and stick that on and it's out of the page. Congratulations. Move that up and then you can sort of build your body this way and then turn it over. But what the, what's the point of that? It takes too long. So rather than do all that, uh, I just learned to build the body in relationships and those relationships kind of change um, in some ways, but kind of stay the same. So uh, in other ways, so the first thing I do is I tend to combine the head and the neck. Uh, this is a, a trick I learned from a uh, good old Bobby Meatbag, Bob Meatbag, uh, but some other artists do it too. It somehow it just helps uh, for me to, to think of the head as a connect thing to the body as opposed to like here's a floating thing and then here's two lines it kind of has this disembodied or no decapitated look to it um, whereas having it sort of connected 
uh, kind of builds a gesture. And even if you, you know, separate the head and the neck, you still, like, after the fact, you still get some of that gesture in there. Yeah, it's especially true in a side view. See, if I draw a side view, and I just, okay, let's get the, the head here from the side view, ear here, and I just stick the, the neck on. I mean, that's okay, uh, but if I kind of treat it like this and I get this as one gesture, it's a lot more cohesive. And the reality is it kind of does work that way anyway. I mean, if you like get your hand and stick it on your forehead, and then pull it back. So either you're gonna hit hair or you're gonna hit more skin. Um, and then keep going back to the back of your head and keep going, keep going, keep going. And wouldn't you know it, you're, you're onto your back. You're, you're following, you stick your hand here and you go, whoa, do, 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 do. and now you're already in the back. You didn't, you didn't encounter a spot where you were like, uh, okay, here I, I'm touching my head and then stop. And then, okay, neck begins here. And that's the indent where my hand went inside. And then that comes up for the neck. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, I combine the head and uh, the neck. And then I kind of create the torso shape, which uh, you can think of it in a lot of different ways. Uh, thinking of it like a bean is often a way animators use. And I think it's very good. Kind of like this, this shape, uh, like kind of, you can think of it like a bean or a peanut. You get some kind of shape like this. Um, and then you put in a center line like so. And now, you know, we've got kind of like a, a rudimentary torso. Uh, you can play around with it. You can make the top part really skinny and the bottom part really big, uh, and have this kind of body. You could have the reverse like that. Got like a very buff person, you know, just add a head here to have this make more sense. And get the legs, big arms, little head. So here's like a more fat person, here's a more buff person. But anyway, so I, I, I start with like this head which kind of flows into the body and you get this bean-like shape. Uh, and then I tend to flow into the legs and into the arms. I've covered this before, how I use these very large uh, tentacle-like shapes that I then break down. Um, and this is also, I can maintain uh, gesture and form and uh, kind of build uh, an appealing body as opposed to one that is very, you know, um, formal and academic and you know, kind of built like this, where it's not that it's wrong, it's just that it can be kind of hard to uh, create as much energy in life. And I think that's very important with appeal is to create, um, you know, life and energy in your drawings. But if you're completely okay with just maybe a more academic approach and that's fine you can you can definitely i mean you don't have to do this it's just it's just one method but anyway so yeah i, I combine things in these these shapes and so to give a very simple body i guess it would look something like this it's kind of the stick figure I mean, it's not a stick, and the reason it's not a stick is because with a stick, you're thinking too much in straight lines. There's too many straight lines in a stick man. See? And this is starting from a stiff point, right? Like, here's a stiff neck, even if we add a, a head on it. It's still a pretty stiff neck. You know, you can add your your movement, um, your knees and hips and whatever, but it's still very stiff. So you can kind of make it more um, exciting, I guess. You could move things around like, okay, let's move this arm like this and then move this. But it's still gonna maintain like a certain stiffness Whereas if you build off curves, um, it 
it's just a lot better. So at first I was kind of, I moved into this where I was still kind of like a stick, but I was kind of working more with curvy lines like that. And I think that helps. Uh, the reason I moved to more of this, I don't know, he's kind of like a Pillsbury Doughboy, but taller. Um, but the reason I moved more to this type of thinking is just because it's got form to it. And the thing that I've discovered, um, <clears throat> not that I'm the only one, I'm sure plenty of people have discovered this too, but, uh, what I found is that the more this initial thing looks like a person, the more I can kind of judge, uh, whether it's right or not. Like, does this look roughly correct um because if it does then i can use a lot more of my intuition so if it doesn't it's like if i look at this well this kind of resembles a person sort of but not really because if i look at a person well they're gonna have thicker legs they're gonna have you know more shape to them so i have to flesh this out out first uh, before I can make it into something that my brain is going to recognize more as a human silhouette. Whereas in this one, it gets there much faster. Now, that might just be me. It might not be that for everyone they, they see a human faster with this. But uh, definitely for me, that's the case. So uh, I just try and get the, the silhouette as close to human as possible and then work on detailing that. So I guess if I had to think about breaking this down into components, um, you would have the head as one component. Uh, I guess you could include the neck to a point, but maybe let's just make that a second component. You have the torso, which kind of is this, uh, I guess it's like a leotard torso, and then arms and legs. So that's really simple, but that's kind of what I'm working with uh, in, in the very, very initial uh, person. So. Let's just do different body types uh, with this construction. So let's say I want to do um, a more fat character. Okay, so what I'm going to think about is a bit different than just anatomy because I could talk about, you know, fat deposits and how people have fat in different places. Like it tends to gather like here and here for, for a lot of guys. For women, it tends to be much more evenly distributed. Uh, for some people, they get like a double chin. Like I, get, I get a double chin when I get fat, and I really don't like that. I still keep my skinny arms and legs, but <laughs> I get like fat here, and then I get fat here. And then my face is still pretty skinny, so I don't know. It's just very, very unappealing. But anyway, uh, unless that's your, your thing, you know, it's fine. Uh, but... I'm not gonna think about all that. I'm just gonna think about shapes that feel fat. So if this is more of a skinny oval, this is more of a fat oval, right? Like we can kind of agree on that. I'm not doing the, I'm not going to the extreme of like a Stewie from Family Guy. I don't know what the insides look like, but. <laughs> huh? uh, anyway, um, that's just more of a, a squished fatter oval. So now this is already feeling fat. All right. Another thing I'm going to do is this neck, this long neck, it's going to get reduced. Why? Because that looks more fat. It looks more fat when things are close together. See, if I put this as a, a body, this feels very fat because it's like there's very little room for anything to slip in the cracks because there's so much fat. It's just occupying all the empty space. But if I do this, and I add a nice long neck, well, huge neck, uh, 
then it's immediately feeling a bit less fat. Now, it still can be fat. We still can make a, a big body, but just for the, if the only thing I'm going for is like a very fat feeling, I'm going to reduce the neck, make the body very wide, and I'm using a lot of these ovals. Not a lot of these ones, but these very uh, horizontal squished ovals. So we get this upper body, and I'm going to get the lower body. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I don't want to make very long skinny legs because that's going to, again, take away from this feeling of fat. It still might look like, like there are people that not look exactly like this, but kind of have like very thin legs and then fat here. But I'm just saying if I want to make a very, just a fat character, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this body and just get some curves in here. So I'm building kind of the tentacles, but following the body, so it's all contained. I'm just gonna stick the arms on. All right, so there we go. Now we have um, that more fat body, and we've got all the same components. We've got the, the head, um, we got the neck here, the torso area, and then the arms and the legs. So if I build on this, it's gonna feel more like a fat person and it's gonna feel pretty, pretty good. Um, okay, so let's do, let's do a buff person now. So now I'm kind of running out of space. I'll just make a new one. All right, so with the buff one, I mentioned uh, before, you know, shapes like squares kind of feel more strong. So let's let's stick with square shapes. Uh, I'm gonna still go straight from the head into the the body directly and build this central form. But I'm gonna have it a lot more based on like a triangle now. I'm gonna keep the top pretty pretty wide. Uh, get some pretty th big arms here, some pretty big tentacles. And then for the bottom, you know, you could do it one of two ways. You could make it really big as well. But uh, I tend to prefer to do the whole skipping leg day thing just because uh, kind of like the fat person, we weren't doing what's real, like what reality looks like necessarily because fat people don't just get smaller legs when they get fat because I can gain weight, but it doesn't mean my bones change. Uh, they don't just shrink. Um, it's just a way of capturing the feeling of that thing, which better describes that thing. So giving this person sort of skinnier legs is going to enhance that feeling of a large upper body. So there we go. Now you can push this even further, for instance. We could, like, this is just like a big dude. Um, but let's say we want like a super hulking person. Okay. Let's try that. So in that case, I'm gonna really go crazy with the traps. I'm gonna build the shape much more like this. Uh, kind of looks like a skull. Uh, but anyway, get that. Have the head down here, really small. Again, to make something look big, you make something else look small. So here's a head, big arms, and maybe like tiny little scrawny legs. I mean, you can still build fat on that, but in terms of, I mean, not fat, muscle, but in terms of the actual size relationship, this is pretty small, right? Like, look at that, it's kind of tiny. But when you flesh it out, it can look pretty okay. So, you know, maybe this is a bit on the small side, you know, but it's just for an example, and it, it can work anyway. So, there, we have the same... I guess, uh, components uh, that we had before. Uh, so we got your, your head. Oops. Head. The, I guess the neck disappeared. So this guy got big neck. This person, maybe it's there and there. I mean, technically, if you're including the trapezius, it's like all the way here and all the way here. 
I suppose you could think of it that way. And then uh, green, so this, the front. Uh, you actually, in this hulking one, you actually see the back as well. In this one, you see just this torso. And then you get the, the legs. and the arms. So when it comes to appeal, I think these are like the, the most important things are just the, the starting points. And I keep coming back to this, but that's just the way it is. Um, the thing you start with is the most important thing because it's the thing you start with. It's the same as if you were building a house. You don't want to start with a shitty construction, a shitty foundation, because your entire house is built on that. Even if you make a really nice house on top of that shitty foundation, it's all going to fall down because the foundation was bad. So in the same way, uh, getting this down first, I feel, is much more important uh, in the grand scheme of things than getting like the minute anatomy right like anatomy is important uh, i'm not saying it's not uh but it is i feel secondary to getting the big form because if you drew this in a comic or something you're just drawing characters like this we would still know oh this guy's the big guy this guy's a super big guy uh this person's the fat person this person's sort of meh Kind of average i guess um so we would still have a sense of things and you don't have to get all the anatomy in um so that's that's like the big thing uh on how to design appealing characters is find out your your shapes uh so you've got your basic shapes the the head neck torso and in this case uh, it was really everyone's different you can have different styles. So for me, what I found my thing ending up being is that the body is, tends to be pretty thin, long, uh, and then the legs kind of long. Some are some are thinner, but yeah, sort sort of like kind of like this type of thing. But you could have a very different look. You could have like a very chibi look, for instance. Tiny neck, almost non-existent. Little squishy torso. Uh, little legs, little arms, you know, and it'll still work. It's still the same components, right? Like you can still see all those, the torso's there, the legs are there, the neck is there, the head is there. The proportions are vastly different, but the components are the same. Okay, so that's a big one. Should probably do like a some other variations i'll do an old person and i'll do like a i don't know like a sexy person maybe a super skinny person so with this one though with the chippy one i have to remember that you know you're you're working in a different thing if i want this to be very cute i have to still follow the other things um that i was talking about in the last video like you know big eyes and stuff like that <clears throat> but when you do you know you can get pretty pretty cute looking person um all right so uh let's do an old person so with an old person what tends to happen is i'm going to draw a side view because it's easier to show from a side view so i'll get the head and go straight into the neck but now the neck is more pushed back and the body is sort of behind and it's got this kind of I mean, not old, all old people look like this. It's just kind of a generic uh, old person look. But uh, you get kind of the, the body with a hunch. Uh, maybe the legs are kind of moved forward uh, to balance that. So, you know, could, maybe he's holding a cane. Maybe he's not. This is all very cliche stuff. But it's a, it's a starting point and it gives you an idea of, you know, kind of how to think about these things. But that's kind of uh, 
<clears throat> an old look thing like this is really important this back and then from the front what would happen is you can see like if you want to know on a front view what it looks like uh from a side view you can do this thing where if you have the side i mean if you want to know what the front view looks like when you've worked out the side view you can do things like this like okay here's the neck right so just drawing the line straight across where does that hit well it hits like kind of in this area so let's say the shoulder it's kind of around the shoulder area and then you can transfer that to this like this hunch is about the same height as his nose so what you can do is say well okay so if the nose is here the hunch is back here so i can kind of create that hunch back here behind the rest and the shoulders are kind of at the same um, same level as the chin so here's the chin here's the shoulders get that in and that's kind of how you build it and this uh, this curve you can't really show it as easily in a front view that curve unless you kind of put in some shading so this shading kind of implies that this form is turning like if you think about it like a let's just say kind of like a stick of chewing gum or something i'm not sure what some curved thing if it looks like that from the side and it looks like this from the front from a three quarters probably gonna look something like this and so the way to like from these two we can see that curve from this we can't see the curve but if we think about how the shot like this part's probably going to be in shadow because it's kind of facing down so it's facing away from the light if the light's coming from up here but this part is facing up so it's getting hit by the light so this part would be lighter this part would be darker then you can uh, apply that to this as well it's so like this part is darker it kind of gets a bit lighter and then this is starting to not not perfectly um but it does feel a bit like it's curved even though it's straight up and down i mean if i added a very slight curve this way or this way probably this way would be better um then you will feel more of that curve uh, but the shading goes a long way into conveying that so you get the shading get the the legs uh things like placement of the leg see the knee is uh, much more in front than the butt it's not a leg that goes like this for instance where everything is kind of straight up and down it's more coming towards us so you have to remember that you have to factor that in that this leg is coming towards us and then this is going back in space and then the feet again are coming towards us so get something like that here's the hand here's the cane and the other hands just kind of down here and then there's the, the eyes and things so there's an old person <clears throat> let's do a sexy body i guess again these are all very generic terms um you draw whatever you think is sexy to you but just to give you an idea of like a, a classical example, you get the body, you tend to get lots of curves. You push, get a, a narrow waist, push out the, the hips and something like this. Kind of sort of simplify those. Like this is still a pretty cartoony body, but um, you can definitely see it's got curves to it, right? And again, same components, torso, arm, leg, arm, neck, head. Uh, skinny, the thing with skinny is just stretch, stretch everything. Like instead of using circles like this, just pull them. I mean, you can use boxes, you can use triangles, maybe triangles this way. It doesn't really matter as long as it's very pulled like it's very stretched 
and do that with the torso, make it skinny and long, legs skinny and long, skinny and long. Almost looks like a stick figure because I'm just shrinking those tentacles from this to like this. So it's almost, uh, it's closer to a stick than a tentacle thing, but I'm still thinking of it like a tentacle thing because I want to maintain that feeling of volume. <clears throat> So, when you have the volume, the big volumes in place, and this is something you have to work on. I think this person is a bit, didn't have enough room and I was trying to make it fit and that's a dumb idea. Should just shrink it and just add the body, give myself some room. So, there we go. A bit more of a longer legs there uh, <clears throat> so from here it's much easier to put the the elements inside <clears throat> so I guess I'll just go through the ones I've already made and then start fleshing them out a bit all right so let's start with uh, this guy just gonna reduce the opacity <clears throat> so you you do see the guy but um, can start building all right so let's get the head in now I always put in ears I think ears are super super important uh, maybe because I have or I had bigger ears I still think my ears are pretty big but my wife tells me they're not. But anyway. Um, okay, so we go straight into the neck from the head. Okay, you can kind of build your head uh, as sort of an individual thing. But as soon as you can, try and bring that into the neck. And then from the neck, go straight into the, the body. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to think about in this. And here I'm just starting from the head and going down. Uh, you could do it any other way. But just for the sake of explanation, this is... Pretty easy way, it's pretty logical. Start from the top and go down. So I'm gonna go into this and I'm gonna think about this area. So this neck is not cut like this. It's not a straight line across that separates the head from the body. Um, and if you look at a side view, you'll see that. So here's the side view of the head. Here's the neck, going like this. See how it goes at an angle, right? So what that means is that you don't cut it like this. You cut it like this, like that at an angle. If you want it to like, be more of a straight line, you've got to cut at an angle. Um, executioner tips 101. Uh, anyway. So here, I'm thinking about this on the body. So see how this part back here, the back where it connects to the body is so much higher. Come on, there we go. Then this part, which is down here. So the same thing is true here. See, the back is back here and the front is down here. So that's why when I draw this, I'm using this to capture the hollow of the like where the neck would insert, if you think about the hollow of the rib cage, the opening up top. So speaking of the rib cage, first I'm gonna, again, lightly define this torso. So I have sort of the parameters of where I want my figure. Now I can sort of break it, uh, depending on how I want this character. So I could just stick with this, that's fine. Or, or I could think more like, well, this is a very, rough outline so wherever I put the body it's gonna sort of fit in this space so I'm gonna add a ribcage shape which I kind of just do something like this like a this type of shape I guess you could get away with this as well some people just you know make a, a big oval for a ribcage um, that works that's fine but for me personally when I add the kind of the this part how the ribs 
uh, kind of turn around and go back and then come back up. More like a rib, rib cage shape. Uh, I feel like I get a better sense. Like, I, of course, it's not perfect. I'm not counting the ribs. This is probably all wrong in terms of specifics, but the big picture is there. So I get the rib cage, and then you could think of the pelvis kind of in a bunch of different ways. Some people think of it like a box, which I think is good. Kind of like thinking of it like a box, kind of like this, where it's sort of a box that's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Uh, you can also think of it kind of like this, which is uh, sort of like a person wearing underwear, which is also very good as a way of thinking about it. And then you can think about this middle connection. What is that like? So here you have the pelvis and the rib cage, which are hard, but in between you have all this soft tissue, which is fat, or maybe it's not. So you could have it like this, uh, just use a different color. You could have it like this, you know, where it's really skinny. You could have it pop out like that. Um, could just be very smooth like this. So how you deal with that is really up to you, but this is sort of the anatomy I think about. It's just like these sections. Um, now I don't always draw all of them, but this is, again, I'm just talking about what I think about. And I think about the knees pretty much halfway from the top to the bottom. And that's not a measurement thing like, oh, count how many heads tall a person is. The fact that the knees are halfway is a mechanical thing, right? Because the leg needs to bend. Um, it's the same as your fingers, right? They, they have uh, joints in a certain place so that your finger can uh, bend and so that there's enough room. It's not just because it's not arbitrary. This is all mechanical. So when it comes to this appealing method of drawing, uh, I think mechanical things are really, really important. They're not to be, like you can get rid of a lot, you can move a lot around, you can change shapes a lot, but it's got to be functional, I believe. Um, and I mean, you can go against that, and I, I did go against that for a while, where it's like, yeah, I don't care, I'm not gonna make it functional. Um, but I find that it's very limiting, especially when you try and move the body and stuff when it's not actually functional. Um, it's easier to make it more functional. So here I'm just using very basic shapes, kind of building like a mannequin figure. You might have seen these, uh, kind of like those body kun figures. Um, get some shoulders in here. Uh, again, the elbows are going to be half of this tentacle, go halfway. And then the arms kind of fit in this, the legs kind of fit in that original tentacle shape. They might go out a bit, like maybe I put the calf out a bit like that. Maybe they have very, very developed calves. Um, that's fine, but it's not much outside of that original tentacle shape. Like I'm not doing this tentacle shape and then doing this or something, that doesn't work. If I wanted to do that, I would make the tentacle much bigger. And the reason is because I don't just want a flow like this and then something that's not connected. I want this whole thing to flow together, right? So that's why I use bigger, these tentacle like shapes because they encapsulate the form in an organic, uh, nice way. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that's it pretty much get your arms in. So for the hands, I use this type of shape covered this before. It's basically a person wearing a glove kind of like this. Um, and you get the arm connecting. It's, it's not in the center. It's not like here and here. It's kind of off to the side a bit. You get your thumb in here. You can break this down into the fingers and you've got yourself a hand, at least a, a very rough hand idea. Um, so yeah, you get your arms and then the hands, that's it. For this person, if they're a woman, which I think they are, just give them big breasts. And again, 
all the rest is still there. There's going to be an elbow. It might be covered by fat, but it's going to be in there somewhere. Um, the knee, same thing, you know, might be covered in there, but it's still there. Um, and same with other areas, like maybe the, the stomach is really hanging low and it hides some of that crotch, but um, it's still important that we get that. And probably the belly button is going to get moved down. Going to just kind of combine, get the ears in, sort of combine the, the head and the neck. I'm not going to make a defined jawline here. I'm actually just going to let it go off. And I know I mentioned um, appealing uh, characters, and someone might say, uh, well, I don't think uh, this is appealing because you made this person fat and that I think that's ugly or something. Well, first of all, that's your opinion. But second of all, I don't think that's what I'm talking about with appeal. I'm talking about like, is this an appealing fat person compared to a not? I'm not trying to pass a judgment on anything to say like, oh, fat is not appealing. I'm saying if you're going to draw a fat person, what would be an appealing way of doing that? Um, so, personally, I, I think I think fat people are fine. So I'm not really <laughs> I'm not really opposed to it. But uh, something where you still can make anything like a skinny person, you still can make an appealing skinny person as and have a less appealing skinny person, even if you're someone who doesn't really like um, skinny people, I guess. Uh, or maybe just the look, not skinny people. That sounds a bit too, too strong, but anyway. All right. So yeah, so here's our, here are our components. Now I'm not going to go super hardcore into anatomy because that's not what this is about. This is more big picture, getting the appeal, right? Cause at this point it's already appealing. Um, and yes, anatomy is, is there too. But again, I'm working with much bigger, simpler anatomy. So if we were to draw the actual rib cage, probably it would be in here somewhere. It's going to be very small, um, but it doesn't work with this actual figure, right? Because the rib cage isn't going to change uh, in a huge way between a super skinny person and super fat person. But here, for this example, we are actually going to make the rib cage much bigger. We do uh, in this in this method, you do move bone you do uh like fine there is going to be areas that uh like let's say the pelvis is here right that's pretty big and then you've got the bones here i mean that's smaller than the fat but it's still uh it's still pretty pretty huge you wouldn't put the same pelvis on on this person for instance it would be like this big so that's that. Let's do some of the other bodies. Okay, so for this one, head, ears, uh, probably give them a very, I mean, you could get the eyes really small and to the lower part of the face, or you could make them also really high up as well and get sort of a I think the small nose is really important, but you could do this as well, you know, huge chin, or you could do the other way, bring the eyes way down, small nose, still try and make a big chin, but have like more up top, maybe it doesn't matter, and then you got to connect it to um, the arm. So the thing with an arm in this, and this is going to cover a bit of anatomy. I didn't want to get too much into anatomy, but I kind of trapped myself here where I have to deal with anatomy. Uh, you have to remember that, uh, the trapezius, so this muscle here, let's call it trapezius. Uh, it kind of goes down and connects into the shoulder here and the collarbone comes around like this and also connects to the shoulder. So there is a relationship between the shoulder and the trapezius and the collarbone. You want to get all that in. And then here the muscle actually goes in and the spine is here. 
uh, kind of hidden in all that muscle. Then you get the shoulder coming from behind, actually coming towards the front. And you get the pecs kind of pushing in and going into that shoulder area. You get like this uh, overlap of muscles with the pecs. And then here you have sort of this hollow area. Then you get the triceps back here, the biceps in the front. And he's also hunched over, kind of like the fat person. Uh, not the fat person, the old person. Very hunched over. So this is all going to be cast into shadow. Because this is this body is, uh, yeah, it's like here's the head, here's the the back, here's the arms coming down like that, and then the legs are sort of like this. So there's a hunched over thing going on. All right, so get the bicep in here, bicep in here, and then the the rest of the arm here. Probably give him. Oversized wrists and oversized uh, hands. See, if I make the wrists really uh, thin, which is what I used to do a lot, and I kind of, because I liked uh, thinner wrists, I liked this kind of shape where you get like a big deltoid, kind of a small skinny shape, and then sort of gets big again in the forearm, then it gets kind of skinny towards the wrist. Uh, I kept doing that on bigger people and it just kept not working. Um, and the problem is it, it kind of gets, it makes this too dainty and it loses that feeling of super strong, heavy, powerful. Uh, and so you want to maintain that. All right. So you know, do the same thing on this side, get the hand in. And then you have the, the body, here's the, the pelvis here, legs coming out. Again, I'm keeping them pretty small. Although you could make them very developed in and of themselves. See, I can make big calf muscles and big quadricep muscles. And it looks like, yeah, these are powerful, but they're also very small in relation to the entire figure. And just make humongous lats to finish this off. Um, with this guy, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm not going to, I guess it doesn't really help to add all the detail, but maybe it's good just to, for you to see kind of repetition of how these are, are built. You get the hands here. Yeah. So something that's super, super helpful that I found is this area right here, connecting the body uh, the upper torso to the lower torso. So what I do is you get kind of the nipples here. I guess they'll be lower if this guy's very muscular. Um, and then you have a split where you have the rib cage, which is, I'll just draw it on new. Thing. So you have the rib cage, right? And it's got kind of this shape to it. You got the collarbones and whatever and the, the rest of the body. Okay. You have the spine in the back, and then you have the pelvis. All right. So here, around here, you have this rhythm. You kind of see it, how the rib cage goes like this way, and then this is from the front, and then it kind of curves. Like, actually, let's see. It does. You have the sternum here. Yeah, it kind of goes around, and it goes like that. So these are all kind of turning, but there's like a turning plane and it's kind of here, I feel. And if you follow this and you go down, get this rhythm, you go down, you can kind of take that all the way to the crotch and then it splits the body very nicely. It creates this central ab region. Um, and then you add the obliques, which are now on a side. So this part, in the ab region, it's all facing forward, and it's pretty flat. And then this part is curving towards the side already. So it's going towards the side plane. It's like a transition plane. So by getting this area, this rhythm, which is right here, 
Um, I find it helps a ton when drawing the figure. Uh, so I always try and include that now. So when I draw um, a person, for instance, let's just say I'm drawing a torso, and I kind of do uh, this thing where, let's say I'm drawing a, a woman's torso. I include this line, which is uh, this line right here. It's right here. And you get that in. And that really divides the, the torso. And you get the obliques here, which are here. And so now you have the front plane and uh, the side plane. So back to this guy, right? So that's what I'm getting in here. I'm trying to define this area and go straight into the crotch with it. So here's this ab central area that I know is kind of flat. Um, you'll notice I added kind of like this triangle shape here. That's actually the end of the sternum, the sternum on the rib cage. It's kind of got this shape like this. So this triangle part is this part right here. And then the ribs are going around like this. Oops, more like that. Anyway, okay, so this connects in, then we get the lats going behind, and then you've got your obliques here. And then with uh, a, a more buff man, it's very important not to do this and push out the hips. Uh, I found it's much better to have almost like a, a very boxy look. And then if you're gonna push parts out to like you don't want it to look super weak like this, uh, push out the legs, make this part of the leg kind of the widest part and that will create more of a, a strong look. Uh, and you could say, well, this is cartoony, but it still applies to even if it was more realistic, it creates a much stronger look than, like if you keep the hips narrow, just because for women, the hips tend to be bigger, so, you know, by contrasting it, a uh, thing looks hyper masculine because uh, the feminine is the opposite. So, actually, the underwear would be more up here. But yeah, that's why I'm doing that. I feel kind of like I'm talking about a bunch of controversial subjects because I'm talking about, uh, you know, gender <laughs> and, or I should say sex rather than gender and uh, fat and all these things and male and female and what things should be but i'm just talking as an artist so i'm not trying to make some kind of social commentary here so please don't attribute any kind of uh motive in that way and all right so let's give him a big jaw let's give you a small mouth kind of skinny eyes small nose and a big uh, cheekbone, maybe a split, <laughs> split chin. All right, so there, we got that guy. And I mean, these people are kind of done. There's not much to say about, let's just add a bit just for repetition's sake. So here, we definitely don't want to add too many details when you've got like a very young character. You want to keep things pretty, pretty soft, pretty simple. Um, so if I was drawing it, I'd probably, you know, indicate a bit for the knee maybe, but I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to do what I did before and like, you know, here's the bicep and everything like that. You know, just keep it very simple um, for the sake of decency. Let's give her a t-shirt and some shorts there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Hands are the same thing. Like I always use this um, glove shape when I draw hands. It's just a matter of like, am I gonna draw it like this? Or maybe more like this, like a bit rounder. But I still consider these similar shapes. It's the same idea, you know, still got like, well, fingers kind of fit in this. You've got this shape. 
In this case, maybe you've got more of like an elegant, uh, dainty hand. But again, I, I think of these the same way. And I think once the basics are done, if they're good, then you can really play around a lot with the extras. Like whether this is a very skinny wrist, maybe it's a very noodly fat hand like that. Um, so, you know, you can do a lot with, with basics. That's why I, I stress so much the basics and I feel like um, sometimes when I'm drawing, people won't be that uh, impressed or maybe they'll doubt like, well, that doesn't look that good. That looks kind of simple and cartoony and whatever, but you can, you can definitely take it to a much more advanced level. And besides, cartoony is not bad. Cartoony doesn't mean it's uh, a bad thing. So anyway, yeah, that's kind of it. Work with the, the same shapes that we that uh, I mentioned in the uh, last one. So you want something to look cute? Well, use lots of circles. Use round shapes, soft shapes, things like that. Um, so for the old person, maybe, you know, in this case, you want to use more rigid shapes because he is more uh, of a rigid person. Uh, also, I suppose it depends on your style, but... You know, we could go ahead and do that and just add like more bony straight lines and kind of feel that old feeling. You know, I don't know. I guess if you're young, you wouldn't you wouldn't get it. But uh, <laughs> I'm pretty young myself, I guess. I mean, I'm middle aged, but I already get lots of back pain and stuff, and it's like yeah. Kind of, kind of understand this feeling a little bit. Don't really want to understand it anymore. Um, all right. So yeah, I mean, you get like this type of thing, but again, it's it's still off the same principles. The anatomy is pretty basic. I can't. I I will go into more detail into the anatomy. I'll probably have to do different sections because it's it's pretty big, um, but I, it's still pretty simple as well. I don't go too into too much detail. I feel like when anatomy gets super complicated and you have to learn every muscle, you're just inviting yourself to forget everything because that's what I did. I just learned everything. I could tell you what all the muscles are and I couldn't remember it. To keep relearning, 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 and it also gives you this false impression of knowledge like as if you know stuff if you know a lot of anatomy um i mean maybe not everyone is like this but i was like this anyway you, you kind of feel like you know a lot but you don't you can't really do much and that doesn't matter then it's like so what if you know everything it's kind of like someone saying well i know everything about an airplane and then it's like yes can you fly it no i can't fly it well then what's the point are you are you building it no i'm not i just i, I just know everything i know all the parts like well okay that's that's fine that's trivia then it's not important and so when it comes to anatomy i think it's very important to uh, not get stuck on the minute little things and oh no i have to learn this muscle and that muscle and this de de this detail and that detail because you really don't you just need the bigger picture unless you're doing some super realistic thing. And if you're doing a super realistic thing, guaranteed, you're going to be using reference. So you don't need to worry about, I mean, unless you're Kim jong -gi, but even then, you know, his things aren't super, super realistic as much as they are, you know, I mean, I'm sure he could if he wanted to, though. Uh, but anyway, the point is start simple, because even if you were putting all the muscles in, all the little things, starting simple is still gonna give you a better result than if you were to start overly complicated. Um, so yeah, we got one figure, two figures left. Let's do these. Um, so again, I'm just doing what I said in the last video for the appealing faces. And so when it comes to uh, breasts, what you have to remember is just how they emerge from the body, I guess, like in a front view. Let's just draw a basic torso. All right. 
right, so you get this kind of shape where you have the, I don't even know what this is called, but it's the upper pectoral region and it's going down and then you get the, so let's just say, let's draw without the breast what the, the body is. Okay, so here's just no, no breast. Here's the muscles. Okay, so here's that section that I mentioned before that goes down the ab central section. Get that in and get the side. Okay, so once you add breasts, what happens is first of all, they kind of insert back here and they go around. Let me make this color a bit darker so it's easier to see. Okay, so they go around and they kind of do this. Like they insert kind of behind and around. So you get this shape on top and then you have this shape. So if you kind of draw this shape going into the shape with this uh, sort of overlapping, um, it kind of works. I overlap too much, but this kind of thing works. And then you get this. And then of course you don't need to, you know, you can sort of fade that off as you go into the armpit, but just, I, I find these shapes really help, like this shape to sort of separate the shoulder and the, like all this area is shoulder, all this area is uh, chest. And then when you have breasts, you also remember, uh, when I talked to, to a student recently about this underwear shape that forms, which is a flat region that kind of looks like the underwear. See here? So like all this is more flat and then the breasts come out. You wanna make sure you have that so you don't end up doing something like this, which is something I used to do. You know, get the boobs too high. Like, well, you're missing that central underwear position. If you do want the breasts to do that kind of thing, uh, you can do it, but um, you need like more steps kind of like this type of thing. Uh, but anyway, the point is they attach under and around and they go up like that. So in this case, what I'm doing, is I'm getting the back here and then I'm getting the side, making sure these are on top of the form that's already underneath. I, I don't I don't think I really work where I, I work out the breasts and the, the body together. I mean, you could, I suppose I can, but uh, I prefer to get the body in um, first, like a rib cage area, just a, no breasts, and then add the breasts on top of that so that they are sitting on top of a rib cage and they're not just, you know, falling into uh, space or body, I guess. Um, all right, so this comes around, you get the hips here. Here's that central area I was mentioning before, the front area. You get the butt, go into the knee. Now you could use like the lightning bolt technique here to go like this, this, this and get that shape, that rhythm. And it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty much it's, it's a lot of the same thing. And have the hand maybe going back, who knows what it's doing. So yeah, there's that. And I mean, I guess skinny guy is just the same as everyone else. He gets this skinny rib cage, skinny pelvis, legs here. I mean, it's pretty much a stick figure. You don't even have to flesh him out too much. He's already pretty much done. Just give him some big hands, maybe some big feet. And that's it. So yeah, that's the thing with appealing bodies is to start with a uh, very simple, where's this one? Here, here, here. We lost, we lost it. He's gone. Here. So start with very simple shapes um, and build off that. So these are these are pretty uh, basic, you know, these shapes, very basic shapes. 
but they work. And think about what the thing is. Like, again, fat. How do I show fat? Uh, well, instead of making something uh, very tall, make it more wide. And so if you look at these two shapes, what do you, what, how you did, how would you describe it? You would say like narrow and tall and wide and short. So which looks fatter? Well, this one looks fatter, which looks skinnier. This one looks skinnier. So apply short and wide to your character. Make the short and make it wide. Make the leg short and wide. Everything gets short and wide. And then you'll have your your person. All right, so uh, pretty much that's it for this video. I hope it helped and thanks for watching.